G'day everyone, welcome back to another episode of YJ Garage. In this one I'll be pulling out my Mazda MX-5 engine. This is continuing on from my previous video. If you haven't checked it out, click the link. Wherever it is. Alright, first up we're going to disconnect everything that is on the starter. Unplug the harness there. off the plastic cap, remove that nut. Then remove the lead from the thread. Don't forget your oil pressure sensor. Next up we're going to start disconnecting the alternator. Pop that grey cap open, remove that nut, and pull out the harness. Next up, disconnect this harness from the rear of the alternator. Just there. And that's the clip you need to push on to release the harness. Alright, next we're going to remove the starter bolts that hold in the harness. bolts eased up a little bit and this is why. The second bolt is just beneath the stock clutch line there and you'll see the thread on the other side just there. Now the harness is free, there's a few more things back there uh, to loosen up, but we'll come back to that. I'm going to start removing the power steering equipment. I have a video that details this in a bit more. Click the link if you need more info. But essentially you turn the crank there till you get access to this bolt and nut. And once you break the tension is free, you'll be able to remove the belt like so. I'm also going to remove this power steering bracket. And it looks like you can't fully remove this bolt until you remove the fans. Just a couple of bolts. And voila. Now you can wiggle the power steering pump out of the way. Now securely zip tie it out of the way. Just below the power steering pump is the AC compressor. We have four bolts, two up the top there, and two at the bottom in similar spots. Just try not to get my face bitten off as by spiders as I get to the lower bolts. There they are there. Try not to drop any tools on your face. All right. Disconnect the lower radiator hose. Remove your radiator. Just the two tabs to remove from there. And disconnect any harnesses and that should pull right up. Alright, 
I did that so I could get access to the bottom rear bolt of the aircon compressor. I, for me, I found it was easiest to get to it from the top. It's another view of it from the bottom. Alright, once you have the aircon compressor free, zip tie it out of the way. I couldn't move it too far because of the power steering pump, but we'll work that out later. Make sure that nothing's being crushed, as you have a lot being zip tied. Alright, next we're going to disconnect the remaining bits of the harness to the transmission. Don't forget that bolt. Alright, disconnect all the switches. Uh, you don't need to mark them, it doesn't matter which way they connect back for the two white connectors. Now just behind all that wiring is the speed sensor. Make sure to disconnect that. Alright, disconnect the clutch slave cylinder. I probably should have done this first before there was a bunch of wires in the way. It's just two 12mm bolts. And if you have the stock clutch line, you need to remove that as well. As you can see there, I've a braided clutch line. That goes directly to the master cylinder. Alrighty, next up, inside the car, we're going to remove the center console. Two screws up the front there, one under there. And two inside the tray. One just there. And the other one on the other side. Turn the gear knob anti clockwise to remove that. And gently pry the center console upwards. Make sure to Pass the rear over the two latch switches. Before you go too far with the center console, make sure to disconnect the window harness. Remove any insulation. Remove the fold bolts holding in the boot cover. Also note that this is torn. I'll have to get that replaced. You can get funny transmission oil smells into the cabin without that. Alright, after that's out of the way, remove those three bolts and the shifter should come right out, just like that. Make sure you have a rag. Cover that up with glad wrap and rubber band. Next. Remove the crank position sensor. Double check you've got this earth removed. Next up we're going to remove the bonnet. Just four bolts. Use some sort of uh, pen to mark the positions that the bolts are in. That will help you reins with reinstallation. Bonnet's quite light, just try not to hit anything, like that. Alright, remove the PPF to transmission bolts, just two just there, and another one that I've already taken out there, and just to the side of that, there's a couple more. Uh, make sure to drain the transmission oil. And then you can remove the drive shaft. There wasn't much space to fill in this. But essentially, all you need to do is get access back there to the rear of the car. Just making sure no spiders are going to land on my face. 
think we're good. All right. Loosen the four bolts that are attached to the diff. Just there. It's a bolt and a nut on the other on the other end. You do need the rear wheels in the air uh, to rotate that. All the square goggles from working under the car. Okay. Remove the engine mount bolts. There's one on each side of the car. Pretty easy to get to, just there. Right, next I've put the cylinder head back on the car. I'm going to use the lift points. One there, one at the rear. Put something behind the firewall, behind there, and in front of the car. Alright, that's my engine leveler. It's from Super Cheap Auto. The only thing I've been told to worry about is the handle, which is plastic, but we'll see how we go. Alright, I picked those up from Bunnings. And here's where things start to go a bit pear shaped. They do not fit onto the chain. So I think about it for a while and I ended up setting up the chains directly to the exhaust and intake studs. Okay, so I would expect the average person to be able to, from that point, pretty much get the engine out in about 10 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. It took me roughly, I think, three hours from that point. A couple of mistakes that I made. One was, of course, not making sure that the shackles would fit onto the chain. Two, how to actually use the engine load balancer. Um, as you saw from the lift points on the cylinder head, one's towards the front of the car and the other one's to the rear. That's so the engine leveler can be connected in a similar way. And what happens is when you swivel towards one end or the other end, you drop the transmission, raise the engine, or vice versa. Um, the way I had it, I was just able to tilt the engine this way or that way, which really wasn't what I needed. Thirdly, where the shifter comes out inside the car, that tends to get jammed up, so you need to come in there at some point and check that it's not getting binded, and you might have to push it down, um, and that'll allow it to clear the firewall. I kept going under the car thinking, why is the transmission still stuck onto the power plant frame? But it wasn't, it was actually inside the car that I had to look and push that down. That took me a while to realize that. The fourth thing, and probably the worst, was um, I had the engine crane set to a certain height and I just detached the chains there. I should have lowered the engine crane first and attached the chains at a much lower point. Because what happened was I hit the ceiling of the garage uh, and I actually had to put the engine down a couple of times very nervously and reattach the chains in a lower position to lift the engine a bit higher. Anyway, what results is this um, trimmed version of a three hour time lapse. That's it for this video. If this video helped you out at all, please like, throw a subscribe if you are new. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.